friends. But then we just say it looks like the greatest urban legends. Oh, Ohio got on the list again. And it's very popular, right? And then, if you want a part three, leave a like, subscribe, and comment. I'm your host, Jade. Okay. Let's get comfortable. So these are the top 10 Ohio scary urban legends, part two. Starting at number 10. So we're gonna start off with number 10 with the Gore Orphanage. Legend has stated and started. In 1803, Mr. and Mrs. Sprunger had found a Gore Orphanage in Vermilion, Ohio. Soon there were 100 boys and girls living there. Then, Rumors of the mistreatment of the boys and girls in the orphanage were from that of Mrs. Sprunger, as she as she would either give the kids to eat anything from a cow or starve them. Mrs. Sprunger would beat them with a leather strap until she beat them with... She would even give the children up as to farmers or to locals as slave labor. Children were allowed to wash them once every two weeks. And all had to use the same dirty bath water. And rats bit them as they slept. Children tried to escape, sometimes alone, even in groups. They even tried to... As people try... As in December, in the warm, cold night of December 1823, Gore Orphanage caught fire. Now, to this day, nobody knows how it started. Some some say a child knocked over a lamp. Others say Mr. Sprunger did it. He hated the children and wanted to get insurance money. The building was burned to the ground with the children trapped inside. And nobody could say, I mean, it was... 100 children died that night. You can see their ghosts lurking in the field. You can hear the sun screaming and pleading for help. Number nine! Not to be confused with Athens, Greece, we're going with Athens Insane Asylum. So in 1874, one of Ohio's largest asylums, in the beginning, everything things were well. Best care. As the years went on, the owners realized put some of the patients to work there, suspiciously on the nearby farm. The greedier they got, the more patients they got. It became a dumping ground that a family couldn't afford or didn't want to look after. It was three times over the capacity, yet number of st staff, patients were strained, days at the time. And beaten by a staff. In 1993, the hospital shut the doors and said we're done and left it to Ohio University. A strange use for using the empty rings. For me, though, the creepy part is of a stain on the top floor of the building. It's of Marlette Skeeling, of a. She was. She went missing in 1979 and was found four days later. And in an abandoned ward, she died of heart failure. She was found naked, with her clothes folded neatly to her. To those who found her, the body the body was decomposed so badly, and seeped into the concrete, couldn't be scrubbed away. Till this day, the stain is still there. Number eight, the melon heads. These humanoid creatures are found in Lake County, Ohio, according to the legend. They would do experiments on children, some Dr. Crow. The good men hoped they wouldn't cause as much a stir that way. Nobody would care about the children anyway, then. Or potentially. The experiment was shock. The children hair fall out. Their bodies mutated. Increasing their head to a gigantic of a million with some excess fluid. They grew up together and over-twisted him and murdered the doctor. 
and set fire and fled since then. Not only that, people have said they've seen adults with fully grown heads going through the trees. Going through the trees. They say the... And now it's been rumored that they're cannibals feeding close to anyone too close to the woods. Moving on to number seven. We have the reformatory. This is an old prison built in 1896 and designed by Levi T. T. Scott. He and he wanted these people to give up their spiritual and harmful alarms. And about over 200 people died there those days. It's been so Morning. Sexually shot and alone when a gun fell off a shelf. She accidentally killed herself while then drove her up. There was also a prisoner that set himself on fire in a cell. There's also a woman. The whole. It was designed for 20 people. Guards would also do this to t torture the prisoners. And some of them. I'm called Darkman. Number six. Franklin Castle. This is the most haunted. This is also the most haunted house in Ohio, in Franklin County, for non. The story seems to back it up. It was built used in the 1880s by a grocer turned banker, Hans Tiedemann. He was rich. He was had so many tragedies in him. His mother and three of three other children who died in, in infancy. His wife was had so much grief. She was over strong. So she turned the house into a castle, tunnels, gardens, and, and spilling network of room. He stopped when his wife died. It changed so many times over the decades. In, that, in the 1960s, reports of hauntings began to spread. Strange electrical surges. Babies crying. A woman in black who roams the black at night. In 1970, human bones were now discovered. Since then? Reports of an axe murderer there, a mass shooting of Nazis in the basement, and a hangings of one of the daughters in the family. So people say that a lasting presence can be felt there. Number five, the Loveland Frogman. This is a really weird one, if you're going to say. More urban legend than hot dinners. So this goes to the town of Loveland, Ohio. So this starts in the 19 in 1955. Amphibious men lived over there. The first sighting occurred when a businessman witnessed three bikes saw some and and he by some side of the road. The man called to the curb, watched the creature for th three minutes. Three saw them three or four feet tall. Some the hands and feet sets of human like features a little bit. They had frog like heads. One of them even waved and had a wand of a wand. The man left over the years, reported, you know, seeing a frog man, the grass man. This is basically Ohio's version of Bigfoot. All the same characteristics. Tall man that just walks around in the Ohio deep woods and has a hut like scratchers and a nest made out of tall grass. And the first, the first sighting started in 1978 when some kids ran into their grandparents' home screaming about a hairy monster they are just seen in the gravel pit outside. When their grandparents went out, they saw it too. It was covered in dark matted hair, sitting in the pit, fiddling with trash. It was 300 pounds, but the family fled. 
many other locals on when people investigated. Native Americans also spoke of bipedal uh, um, as they would leave food up for them to keep the peace. Next up at number three, Cincinnati Musical Hall. This is a so this was a this is a musical hall in Cincinnati, Ohio, completed in 18, 1878, before construction was began. The location where the dead rang alone. How intense is that? Authorities found out 100, 100 human skeletons to be removed, and as it stands on, in a more even a steamboat exploded and flung bodies all over the city and buried in the ground below below the music hall. And, and it stands to have all with an old orphan and a hospital as well. It's the most haunted place in town. One night, they never touched me, but I know when they all around. A, a thrill, electricity. Well, well, this person knows how to be calm with a dead person. Wow. Number two, Lake Hope Furnace. Do I learn the industrial furnace? This, after 20 years, the furnace was shut down. Some say creepy stories still remain alive. The finest still goes on at night. One boy... So one night, a man was there with his lantern and accidentally slipped into the bubbly ore inside the furnace. He screamed out for help, but was consumed in seconds, legend says. On stormy nights, a ghostly watchman returned to make his rounds as a dark figure carrying a lantern walking along of Lake Hope Furnace. Some even say he continues pacing back and forth until lightning strikes nearby, causing him to, to vanish until the next time. Number one, wicker him in. In the 1990s, this... I saw a man opened an inn in the 1990s as coach drivers, locals, could eat and converse. I, so one night a driver was, uh, you know, bragging about how much money he was making. Some men in the corner hatched a plan. He headed to the, they jumped him, brutally murdering him, murdering him on the spot. Employee was sent, on, sent to check on him. And visibly shaken when the, the others saw a horrible sight. The room was covered all in blood. The blood was seeped in, created that of a headless body. Was more shocking, there was no head. This was the end of his business. He ordered everything to be taken on Umbrin to scrub the floor and remove all the bloody outline. No matter how hard they tried, it would not fade. People were reporting even seen a, of a... Yeah. People even reported seeing that of a headless man. No use. The, the inn was renovated in the 1920s. The stone floor was removed. And to an, as they pulled up the floor, they recalled it horror. Yeah, you know, which in, was was now thank you ohio for all of these stories if you're from ohio let me know in the comment section if you're not from ohio where are you from have i done an urban legend video on that why not what's wrong with me enough of that do you want part three let me know my name is jade i will see you all in the next video